This fine, wonderful evening on a random Thursday in January. January. 2019. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Hell yeah. Happy yeah. New Year, friend. We've been at each other's throat up until that moment. Yep. By the way, and I want to point out. Right afterwards. I want to point out, 8.03, Scott, why aren't we live at 8 o'clock? I don't know, Greg. Why are we? Oh, live? don't even! I you had the stream. It. You got the no. thing. It's right there. You didn't. It's have right there. Liar! You did not have the stream ready to go on your end. That is not true. You are. So <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. I was fully ready. I, you did you? Was it saying you, streaming? You are going to make me say words <laughs> on the channel. <laughs> that I tried real hard. Dare you? Not to say. <laughs> hey, everybody! This is the technically speaking live show. My name is Greg. To my right. On the lower end of mediocre, because oh, you're a terrible person. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Wow. You've been downgraded, sir. <laughs> this is I'm at the lower whatever. part of average. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, I'm he's still above. average. The underside Cheers to of the average. average. I mean, I'll give you that much. Anyway, what's going on? we got a great show lined up for you. We are talking about all kinds of stuff, man. There's a lot of stories that have uh, broken pretty late here. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about our tech expectations for 2019. Oh, you geez. get the, You see what I did there? You get... Because tech so bad, you should feel bad about it. Okay. And uh, Google patents a new way to interact with next generation devices, which is uh, pretty interesting. I thought um, we're going to talk about Apple had a had kind of a kind of a crappy day, and uh, there's a new thing happening with your Chromecast. If you have a Chromecast uh, sitting on your wireless network, you should probably pay attention to that one, and uh, you know maybe make some changes to your network because you know bad things is is happening. So be aware. So before we get into all of that, we got to talk about some of the things that you see on your screen right now. By the way, the lower thirds. Ah, that's not, not working. All right, let me fix that one. You talk. You can fix that from here. Of course, from there. Can. No. Look at you go. No, I have to. I have to fix it from here. But the problem is, I really can't barely see. Mm. Which one says lower thirds? <laughs> uh, you can't read that far away. I for real can't read uh, that far away. No. No, it's... you're on main. There you go, over there. And then lower thirds, that one right there. That's the one. Alright. Let me see if I can fix it. No. No. That's, yeah, the that's one. it. Is that it? I don't know if it'll fix it. Like, boom! Oh, look at that. Wow, great. It's almost like he knows how to uh, do OBS. Anyway, so some of the things that you see on your screen right now is uh, one of actually the very first thing that's in the comment section. This is all new uh so yeah new year new studio new studio new look some big things if you've been following my twitter maybe my instagram i kind of went on a bit of a i complained a little i'm not going to deny that the last video that we made is just blowing the doors off of stuff big time yeah i mean setting the world on fire anyway so that video we specifically <laughs> kind of talked about some of the things if you wanted to be a content creator uh we had we talked about doing something like this, uh, ultimately because we really wanted to do that. And this gets into the, uh, you better get on the bus of technically speaking in 2019 because this bus is leaving and it's going to be a big one in 19. So, choo choo. This is uh, how buses do their that, ones, right? Yeah. I just said choo choo. <laughs> I mean, I know it's a big whatever. steering wheel, but whatever. Get on this train here. Yeah. Get, get on the train. Get on the train. Let's come on. Come right on. Train. Train. <laughs> and right up. Anyway, That's the get one. on this train because uh, 2019 is going to be a big year for Technically Speaking, and it does start with a live show. Um, we're getting rid of Every it. Every Thursday. We're not getting rid of it. As a matter of fact, we're going to start offering space in here to some potential sponsors, and the first sponsor for Technically Speaking oh. is right here. Uh, Whitestone Dome. They sent friends. us a tremendous amount of Whitestone white stone dome. That's hard to say sometimes. It really kind of White is. stone dome uh, glass protectors. If you watched the video two videos ago, you know that I have one on my Pixel 3. I'm getting ready to put one on a friend of the channel's, uh, Justin's iPhone XS Max. Um, I'm getting ready to put one on his Pixel 2 XL. As a matter of fact, that's it right there. Yeah. Uh, I will be putting on one on another friend of mine's, uh, what does he have, a, a Pixel 3 XL? I don't know. I got lots of them, basically, and huge friends of the channel. I absolutely love their product. Swear by them. First sponsor, yeah. very first one, Whitestone Dome. There'll be another video that comes out about how you install it on an iPhone XS Max, but they are a sponsor a, of the channel. It's iPhone 10, just, you know, 
for the record. But they do make a great product. Difficult to say, but man, it's really great. Really yeah, love, are, love them. You super smooth feel. If you want a fantastic screen protector for your phone, and mind you, the installation procedure looks a little bit weird because you're basically just dropping this weird liquid on your phone, but swear by it, man. it trust They're me the super legit this sounds bad the holes of your phone are protected yeah they really thought about everything when you're installing it you put stickers and everything over to protect like the the what are they called ear 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 holes like the receiver and the microphone yeah yeah sure we'll go with that the holes at the top and the bottom uh they're all protected they put something around the bottom anyway go watch my video yeah so um so let, let's do some quick shout outs. We got a bunch of people in the audience, which I am super happy to see everyone. Larry, love to have you stop by. Miss Sheila, of course, always a pleasure. We have the one and only Mr. Preston McNair. Stop ooh, by, stop ooh. by to say hello. Grace us with this pregnant. Ooh, Preston. it throws a couple fire. I think you're talking about fire about this, huh? Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah right. It's crispy. And we have Mr. Mayor himself. Ooh, the mayor? Yeah, the mayor himself is there. Happy, um, also, happy, happy. Also, one of these 10 is my wife, who uh, texted me to say that we look a little bit blurry, but she thinks it's because we're on Wi Fi. Or, you know, bitrate stuff. We've been fighting that battle all day, too. But anyway. You do look a little blurry. Yeah. It well, says the health is good, though. It's a crispy blur. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's go with that. Can that even work? Uh, to answer your question about the hawk, what is after the hawk? Remember, it must complement the beard. Just wondering. Um, I'm going to rock with this for a while. Yeah. Um, I mean, it looks looks pretty it looks pretty good, I think. Hawktastic. Uh, uh, hawktastic. Hocular. <laughs> it's uh, Hoculus. Oh, Hoculus. Uh, Ace and Atlas. I actually know who that is. Welcome. I, I don't want to blow him up. I don't know if he wants to throw his name out there, but I know who it is. I know who it is. Uh, welcome, man. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate you. Uh, uh, what's hang on. on. You, want, you want to get into it? No, not yet. What sponsors. Uh, yeah, you yeah, mentioned. Yeah. Yay. Sponsors. Gotta love them. Uh, here's the other thing. While that is a sponsor and it's a company... We are not going to make it just companies. Uh, it's going to be potentially maybe other content creators. So yeah. long story short, everything up here that you see might be rearranged from time to time. So check out the live show every single Thursday because there's going to be something new. It's going to be like a game. It is going to be like a game. Uh, it will kind of look the same maybe, but you'll have to tune in every Thursday at 8 p.m. to find out uh, it, what is it, new it up there. Long story short, YouTube is a community. How many times can I say that? I don't know, but I wish you would get to the point. Would be would be helpful. Oh, that is aggressive. <laughs> I'm going to continue to take my time. <laughs> I know you are. That's why I said it. Like I know, I know uh, for sure. I want to make sure that folks know we are going to build this technically speaking YouTube community. Uh, we're doubling down. For sure. We're going to double click on. I hate that say. I hate it so much. <laughs> I don't know why I said it. We're going to double click on the community aspect of things. Yeah. Just take over, for God's sake. Just make me shut up. So oh it's God. 2019. It's a new year, and that means not only new studio, but there is new technology that's coming out. Uh, there already, there's a bunch of rumors uh, as far as like new devices that are coming out for this year, and CES 2019 is right around the corner. Please believe we will be talking about everything that comes out during CES. This is this and E3 are among my favorite times of year when like all the new products and stuff come out, new video games, mm -hmm. new, new all the things. So. Uh, up front, I'm kind of curious about what your thoughts on our new stuff that is coming out in 2019. What do you want to see in 2019 from new devices, new phones, what have you? What are you looking forward to? Oh, uh, I, okay, so iPhone really gets the videography right, mm -hmm. in my opinion. The Pixel does the pictures better. So okay. I want a company, I don't care who it is, yeah. I want a company to get both perfect, nail it. That's what I want. I don't care if it's Apple or Google. I prefer you, Google, of course. What do you think is missing from Android? They don't do video cameras. well. I, I think a video, part of yeah. I don't do video as well. They do it well because yeah. I've used it for uh, some of the videos that sure. I made. But iPhone does it a little bit better. Their microphones and their audio of their on when they're recording yeah. video is better. Now that one I will definitely give you. Resolution wise, I feel like it's almost kind of a crapshoot because I feel yeah. like they both take great video. The video is a little bit warmer on an iPhone. Okay. And yeah. It, I like a colder, like a more bluish tone, yeah. so I I tend to go towards Android. Okay, but it's almost too cold. Whereas I want a happy medium. I want the ability to change that if I can. Give me the ability to ditch my DSLR. That's what you're looking for. 
Drop for the DSLR for the I want to. I want to be able to. I, I can mean, almost do it right it's, now. It's close. It's, it's close. Super but close. But that's what I would like the ability to ditch uh, the DSLR completely and do everything on. I'm close. I can almost get it here. Um, okay. But the video is just part of it's the developer's fault. Like they go so whole hog on Apple. Yeah. Like Instagram's really bad about it. Facebook's really bad about Snapchat it. Snapchat for the longest time was, was oh, demonstrably cool. worse on oh, Android phones cool. because I mean the, the majority of their market share was on Apple phones. So I mean I I get I it. I get it, but you gotta go where the people are. And if the people are on iPhone or the people that are using your product are overwhelmingly on iPhone, then it, it from a dollars versus cents perspective, it just does not make sense to the people in the US. That's the problem. Yeah. People in the U.S. The world, I don't, is Apple still number one in the world? Apple may not be number one in the world, are. but again, if you're Snapchat and the majority of your people are on iPhone and the majority of the iPhones are in the U.S., then you're going to spend your time in that in that ecosystem. No, I, I get because it. Because outside of that, you're talking about WhatsApp. That's by far the bigger chat application oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. video application the world over. Like, not it's not even close. Well, China's not even selling iPhones, which we'll get to in a minute. Or they're selling them; they're just not selling it well. Well, yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. Mm -hmm. Trust me. Um, but so, I mean, that's, that's some of the top phones right now that you can go get in the market, yeah, are the Huawei P20 Pro, yep, or the Huawei Mate, Mate. 20 yeah. Pro, uh, the 6T from OnePlus, yeah. Which, by the way, I'll be honest; I've been kind of wanting to try. I'm a Google Pixel guy, and you know this. Like, I would love to try OnePlus's 6T McLaren with yeah. 10 gigs of RAM. I think it's wholly unnecessary. Of course it is, but gigs, I want to know what that does. 10 gigs is just—it's just a selling metric. Like, all it is is just like this is how distinguished our phone is. It has 10 gigs of RAM. The problem is, it's not going to be supported. You're never going to be able to use up all 10 gigs of those RAM. It's—it's just, it's just not—it's just not practical. Like that's. That is being ridiculous just for the point of being ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's why I want it. I'm ridiculous because I'm ridiculous. Well, yeah, but... I think we've we've garnered this. <laughs> By the way, I have I figured out who my spirit animal is. It is Chris Farley. Mm, that's another yeah, person yeah. who is as loud, like, was as loud as I am. I can see that. I can see that for sure. I love that. Uh, so do you think we're going to get a new iPhone this year? Duh. Well, you're going to get three. You think they're going to do three again? Oh. This is especially in light of uh, talking about Apple's no good, very bad day. That no, they no, no. Yesterday. I'm wondering what they're going to I thought we were going to go back to tech, tech specular. Or whatever. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> tech expectations. Get it right. Like, how tech specular. You... Tech specular, idiot. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know why I'm giggling so hard at that. That was so not close. <laughs> <laughs> like, not, even, not even a little Um. Close. Holy crap. Have a good day. Oh my God, you came into our chat. I watch your stuff all the time. Dude. Dude. Seriously? Okay, hang on. You so, guys, for everyone. Oh my it, God, look at my face is red. I'm so excited. You need to understand, uh, <laughs> the LA Beast, we have watched oh! so many of this dude's videos. I have never laughed so hard <laughs> watching this man eat. Crystal Pepsi. Oh, the Crystal Pepsi. Holy so, crap. Oh man. Dude, Dude, I don't know what to do. That throw me all off. Have a good day. I, you, I love you. You have a good day. You know, Dude, I absolutely love you. Oh my god. Anyway, that that's me so far. I was like, I'm, a, I'm for sure off my game. You got your rocks. You got your <laughs> rocks. Look, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, I'm sweating. I don't know what to do with myself right okay. now. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So new iPhone. You think that you, you, you were still convinced we're gonna have three of them? No. When I go back and kind of think about it, I think it's gonna be. They'll do a max and a regular size. I think, I think that's fair. I'm interested to see what the numbers are, which, of course, they're not talking about, which, again, we're going to get to um, just over the course of uh, uh, the topic that's coming up here in a little bit, talking about how uh, Apple has really kind of had a rough, uh, a rough for sure start to the year um, with a letter that Tim Cook put out. I'm interested to see how the uh, kind of the, the spec down version of the iPhone is actually mm -hmm. selling, which, again, they're not talking about their numbers. So I think that's going to drive, at least for Apple, whether or not they even decide to do a low budget phone. I think it's going to be a big winner though because I think the Pixel 3 also was kind of a lower spec phone that sold well. Yeah, dude. The Pixel 3? The Pixel 3, yeah. It wasn't lower spec. It, it was, was the same specs as the XL. Yeah, yeah, but it's not a, it wasn't a monster improvement over like the Pixel 2. We've had this conversation. No, 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 no. I, I guess, 
Okay, you're saying Pixel yeah. 3 is in general, like, including the XL. The yeah, yeah, third yeah. generation Pixel. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. I was okay. like, I thought you were talking like the specific small model. No, of no, 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 okay. no, 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 not that at all. But notches, like, do you, are we going to see more notches this year? Uh, I don't not, know. Uh, so six months. Not, notches are probably the worst thing that's ever happened to mobile phones. I'm kidding. <laughs> he was about to, he was about to murder me. Overblown. Well, who cares about the notch? I'm Look, I don't think the notch. Like I'm gonna tell you right now, the notches will get smaller. I think six uh, one plus on the six T really got it right. Yeah. Like, the teardrop, like the little teardrop they have at the top. What about the gorgeous the, you know, the S10 S no the S10 uh, Pro Touch you're talking about with the hole punch through. Oh, that's terrible. Looks dope. Dude, it looks amazing. No, you're dumb. The hole punch through? It's not a through and through. I thought it was a through and through. No, it's not a through and through. It's like, just I'm going to put a it's, lanyard in it. It's like this. It's like that size for the camera, and that's it. Everything else around it is all screen. I'm going to oh. do lanyard right through the hole. Do lanyard through your hole. I think what's going to happen is the notches will get smaller because it's a technological I mean, evolution. Yeah. But my thing is, if it serves a purpose... Who cares? I mean, I'm with you on that. Uh, who cares? I don't like. I have. I've never noticed the notch on the Pixel Three XL. And guess what? A story is not right now in January. Notches. Yeah, talking about notches. I mean, uh, almost. Or nacho mania. <sighs> the, who Water. cares? No, uh, I, it doesn't matter. But I mean, every phone is going to have some variation of, like, everyone is trying to move towards full screen, like edge to edge screen devices, and mm -hmm. they are all going to have some type of a cutout or a spot where there's just no screen pixels there because you got to have something for a camera. Are you going to give up front facing camera? Bet no. not. What about that slider? I think I'm, MKBHD talked yeah, about yeah. it. It was like, basically, you like grip it with your thumb and then slide up from the back. I mean, We're going back to that now? It, I, the, it's cool, though. The problem with that is going to be uh, mechanical. <coughs> I mean, that was always the problem with like the slide outs and stuff like that. Mechanically, stuff like that is going to break over time. So yeah. I don't feel like that's a very good you know, solution for it. But, I mean, if that's the kind of end point in between. Give me like a hot take. Like, what's the craziest thing we're going to see in 19? Don't say uh, the palm pre. <laughs> <laughs> the, the palm. We're going to say the palm again. Yeah, for sure. No. Uh, yeah. Man, I don't know. I'm, what I want to see is... Um, I, I want to see some more interesting takes on hiding the camera. Not not mechanically. I think probably the... Not mechanically. Not, not okay. mechanical. I, I want to see... I, okay, so I'm interested in seeing what you can do mechanically to hide the camera to make a full like edge-to-edge -edge screen. But I feel like you, we've probably pretty much already seen that. It's going to be like the pop-out camera or the slide-up camera and stuff like that. I'm interested to see how developers are going to make use of, if you have a notch or if you have like the teardrop or whatever, how do you still kind of maximize screen real estate elsewhere? Because right now you've got, even for the notch, no one's really maximizing, like using the screen real estate on either side of the notch. And I think that's why a lot of people are so irritated by it, is it's like, you get the extra screen real estate in the corners, but it's still not really useful. So by, like the idea that Samsung has by moving the whole thing over to one edge and just making it teeny tiny, now you've still got all of this. You, you're, you're really maximizing how much developers still have to use. How many more times can I say maximize? I mean, uh, yeah, but they're, so, still, they're still a hole. Yeah, for sure, they're still a hole. Yeah, I, I, I lose screen, I don't want that. I, I, think, I think people are gonna be a lot more receptive to that than the notch or even the teardrop. No one cares about the notch. <laughs> the notch. Uh, they clearly do. It's they a notch. They clearly clear about, uh, what? Clear about the notch. Maximize clarity! Clarity! I'm just having a stroke. Oh, So, uh, what's a hot take? Like, random weird thing. Do you have, like, the hottest of hot takes about tech in 19? Um, I got one. I mean, not not regarding mobile devices. My, uh, we're going to we're gonna see more VR devices that are going to come out. Mark my words, um, HTC Vive is, or HTC, a not only handset manufacturer, but also the manufacturer of the Vive, uh, which is the virtual reality thing, and it's dope. If you haven't played with it, it's amazing. Oh, it's cool. It's so freaking cool. Um, so they are packed up. They actually tweeted about this earlier. They are packed up, headed towards CES right now, and they, they very subtly blurred one of the cases that they had over in the corner that says HTC something, and the internet has been lit on fire trying to figure out what is in this one case. Uh, so yeah, I'm 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 super stoked for that one. Um, I can see that. Yeah, AI is like, gonna get creepy, creepier. I don't know it's if that's gonna, possible. No, it's gonna get one step creepier. 
I don't know if that's possible. It's going to get one one step creepier. Like, we're Google Duo. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Or no, not Duo. Duplex. Duplex. That's yeah. It. Duo also awesome though. Yeah. Uh, Duplex. You're calling for a Duo now. Which just, I think we're just talk about. Yeah, I mean, I kind of threw it in there, but you know, random cool thing. If Does you have work? Android, I haven't tried it yet. I don't know if you've seen the update yet, but uh, um, Duo. If you're using Duo, which is the kind of voice chat, voice uh, point to point voice chat thing, that, it's uh, like Google FaceTime. Has. Basically, yeah, FaceTime competitor. Um, that is Dope. out in the wild now, and they have uh, uh, group calling enabled, which. FaceTime also has. So, yet again, Google playing kind of, you know, keep up with Apple. Typically. I actually really like Duo. I do. I mean, it's, I'm it's glad really I have it. Yeah. I can't use it. I mean, I can use it with an iPhone user if they have Duo. Larry brings up a good one, 5G. 5G. I think Google Duo. Overrated. Call her now. Really? Overrated. 5G is overrated. Yeah, overrated. It's a way that they can charge us more. 5G is the new 4K. How about that? Whoa, you're right. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. I think 4K is totally overrated. I, I, I think, I've said it. I believe it. 4K is overrated. 4, 4K from a consumer perspective, totally overrated. Yeah, I mean, there's. I look. I I don't have a 4K television. I don't have a 4K. I don't. Well, the only thing I have a 4K in my house is the Xbox One that my kids just got for Christmas. But you don't have a 4K TV. Exactly. So, so it's I don't 1080p. have 4K. So it's 1080p. So yeah. it literally does me no good. Yeah. I have something that is compatible. I guess 4K. Yeah. I guess my phone. Okay. Yeah, but again, I mean, AI I, gets creepy. We get a wearable. Uh, like Android gets a wearable. We get a wearable. I want that in the worst possible way. Mm -hmm. I get, want the Android wearable. Please, please believe we'll be among the first on the block. We, we get. Will damn sure, try to be first on the block. Yeah, uh, we will. There will be a wearable. It'll be a big one. Physically, or you're no. saying like, like it'll be wise. It'll impact. Be like, it'll, it'll be. be a it'll be deal. a big one. Okay. Big deal. January 19, right? I'm saying. There is a wearable that comes out for Android. That's a big deal. That's pretty hot take. I have absolutely no idea what it would be. I have I, some suspicions. It they they have to compete with the watch. The the, the, Apple, the watch Apple watch is, is murdering right now. A long like light years away. Yeah, but I don't know if Google cares. They should. They, well, they should because wearables is arguably one of the next kind of hot sectors in mobile technology that hasn't really been exploited yet. I mean it. It has been to an extent, and it's been almost entirely dominated by Apple. And again, it's we talk about this all the time. It's the integrations. I mean, Apple, Apple is incredible at what it does. It makes it makes devices, which I mean, let's be real, they're pretty. They work well. Mm -hmm. They work really well, mm -hmm. and they they integrate well together. Mm -hmm. They integrate incredibly well together. And what does Google not do well? Integration. They the devices might look good. They might respond well. They have the software. They They're have trying. the AI in spades. They're trying. They're always missing the integration. So there. you give me a device that has some really well thought out native integration. Woo! I mean, we're getting. I'm in. There. I'm in. We're Larry, getting. HDR greater than 4K for the visual ooh 100% agree with that. Huh. HDR is a way bigger deal than 4K. Miss Sheila, to your point, Memphis ribs might look good on the sponsor. I didn't even see that, Miss Sheila. Uh, you are 100% 100% right. right. I was all thrown off by. The LA Beast coming in, like, threw me all off. If I could put that on my resume, I would. I mean, I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, other certifications, yeah. LA Beast joined our live show. Not to take away from any of y'all, but I'm just like, yeah, I've just watched this content for yeah. so for long. For years. The Crystal Literally Pe years. Oh, God, the Crystal Pepsi and the uh, Echo. The High C Echo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, still, still gets me. Still to, gets, to, ah! give, to give the rest of you an idea of what he does, if you remember back in like the 90s, Pepsi had Crystal Pepsi. This cat found an original, uh, unopened, yeah. unopened Two Crystal liter. Pepsi. No, it was 20 ounce. 20 ounce Crystal Pepsi and drank it. That's brave. I don't care. And the shenanigans that right. happened afterwards were hilarious. Oh my God, absolutely. Uh, love yeah. Anyway. He's just also, he's just a good, he's just a, he's good a great dude. guy, man. He's just a good Legit dude. Legit good guy. Uh, there was a great documentary I've done on him, because he's a competitive eater. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah. Really good documentary. Yeah. Anyway, go check out the LA Beast. Random plug, you know, whatever. Uh, so, you got any other expectations for Tech this year? No, I, no. I do, so one other one that I do want to, we, we love talking about, far future uh or maybe not even that far future down the road but especially like where technology gets 
to that that weird boundary between science we, and science fiction. We had some wild conversations earlier today. Yeah, we did. Like, whoa deep in. Like, like you think we go off the deep end on this show? I mean, we were... Whoa, we were way we out, were there. out there. Uh, so CNBC had an article talking to Elon Musk about what his predictions were for the coming year. So it started out as a 2019 prediction and kind of moved into just generally where do you see some of this technology happening uh, there's some pretty interesting uh, predictions that Elon Musk had among them within the next 10 years. He says that we will uh, have the first humans on Mars, which, okay, okay, I can get that. He's got, he's basically got three, uh, three predictions. The next seven to 10 years, the first humans will uh, colonize Mars. Now, colonize, right? Not just, not just land on Mars. No. Colonize like, Mars. Live. Be. Boy, that's an aggressive timeline. Ten years? Within the next seven to ten years, humans will colonize Mars. There's a lot of engineering you got to solve before you're going to ship people three-plus months away on effectively a one-way trip. Yeah. That's a lot of logistics you got to hammer out. So, that would man. be like, you have an elementary school named after you. I would hope so. First person to land on Mars. I think again, about, think about not, that, that's a resume boy. I'm not even talking about Woo! landing on Mars. He's saying that within the next seven to ten years, people are going to be living on Mars. That also means that someone would have already landed on Mars. I know what I'm saying. So, First person. so somebody has already landed on Mars, and then there's a bunch of supply missions that have to happen, provided that we've done a whole lot of engineering and problem solving, and then that happens within the next now to seven years, and then people start living on Mars. Yeah, I got it. That's bananas by that logic that by that logic someone would have to land on mars in the next five years for sure just to land oh that's the effective one-way ticket well i mean i mean it's all one way at this point until you figure out how to go fast the other way so that's just a matter of timing because there's i can't remember it's the i think it's called the home and transfer why do i know that it's called the home and transfer where earth and mars get close enough to where you could realistically uh, basically take off from Mars and still make it back to Earth. So it's not it's not a one way trip necessarily. We gotta get well, the logistics yeah. are way harder than a moon moon landing. It's way a one, it's a one way trip with the in, with the potential to maybe kinda if we time it right, get maybe back. get you back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, the logistics are pretty ugly. Uh, check out uh, The Martian if you haven't seen that or read the book. The book is fantastic movie's really good too um, i'm really excited about his the the crazy one yeah so that's that's no, his yes. first prediction within seven to ten years the second one i'm gonna skip because it blows me away that much the third one was actually kind of like eh, okay whatever he says that tesla's cyberpunk and that's in quotes i don't know why pickup truck prototype could be here in 2019 so tesla is about to round out the first four models that they've done they've done the they've done the s they've done the three they've done the x and now the next one that's coming up is the model y which is supposed to be basically the model three for the suv which is the cheaper kind of more consumer ready suv which rounds out their s3 xy sexy that's is that seriously that's, why oh yeah the model three was originally supposed to be called the model e but it just didn't i think there was a maybe model of oh, ford i think owned model e I think that's the way it worked. Either way. So, yeah, S3 XY Sexy was what he wanted his his car lineup to be. So that'll round out. Once the Model Y comes out, that'll round that out. And then the next big thing is, of course, tackling trucks. Uh, so he's been talking about this 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 Tesla uh, battery-based all-electric pickup truck. Um, and he says the prototype could be here as early as 2019, which, of course, I'm sure is going to fall into production hell, just like the Model 3 did. Uh, but the real crazy one, the one that, like, if you thought the Mars one was far-fetched, uh, he says that within the next 10 years, within the next 10 years, you will be able to hook up your brain to a computer in the next 10 years. Uh, and what he's talking about is this kind of side project that he's had. Uh, Elon Musk, of course, known for the bajillion companies that he started over the years. Mm -hmm. Uh, Neural Lace. It's I'm made by a company called Neuralink. So, which he owns, like. Which he, yeah, I mean, it's his company. He when started. he bought them, he bought them, it was like, it was two different scientists or yeah. two different doctors, and then he ended up buying them or something like that. It was several years ago. 
so yeah, I am so excited about that. I I'm I'm interested. Like that's a that's a loose enough uh, prediction. You Ten know, years. What, yeah, but but also, what does it mean to when I when you when he says hook up your brain to a computer? Like what? What does it mean? What does that mean? To what extent <clears throat> is a brain hooked up to a computer? I'm he's not talking about finished product, and I can just like. Like, and now I'm thinking at my computer. Yeah, it's not that at all. But to what extent are we talking? Are we talking about like the early human trials of being able to say like, "Hey, can you use your brain to move your mouse around?" That would be a big deal. That would have massive implications for uh, people with disabilities. I think that's massive kind of like, implications. At first, that's what they were going for. Sure. The folks that have disabilities with their brain, right, wrong, or different. Yeah. Go after them first and help them live a better life. That was the purpose of. The neural net. What? Michael Daniels, love the show. Please come play in the game. <laughs> Michael, we love you. You know this. Yes. I promise. We will. I'll, I'll hold him he to it. He will hold me to it. Uh, you know me. It's I like, badger him about it all the time. You, he does. I just, I like sleep. Usually, here's the problem I get almost no sleep after the live show on Thursday, so like I'm up wicked early to go to work on friday it's just an excuse anybody feel bad for him no i, no, I wouldn't feel bad for me either sure i'm just not. making a, i'm making a comment um we love you michael daniels good man but with elon i okay so there's probably what it's going to be and then there's what i really want it to be <laughs> so let me let me just get the yeah. probably what it's going to be sure it's not going to be any in the beginning not yeah. anywhere close to where i where i would really like it to go it's going to help folks that have um, debilitating problems by and by hooking this lace up to their brain, it's going to help them maybe move, yeah. think, just degenerative diseases, whatever that might be. That's what it's going to do, and that is awesome. That is exactly what it's supposed to do. That's great. But what I want, what I want it to do, and Greg knows this, so this is going to get a little bit in, a little more in depth to me. Is I am terrified of dementia and um let's see i've already forgotten alzheimer's, alzheimer's. Well, that's ironic yeah that's the irony that's, that's why that's, yeah also see, i mean look i love you to death but let's is there anybody anybody well, who's hey, not hey, terrified of those no things? no no. i get it I but mean, like for me it's just one of those things deeply terrible he knows a lot yeah. but that's just something that i'm really hypersensitive to yeah so what i want is the ability to put this lace on my head mm-hmm and know that if that comes to me, like dementia and Alzheimer starts to set in, I can either slow it down, stop it altogether, whatever, by this lace until my organic self is ready to retire. Bro, you're talking way, well, what's funny is you're talking way far in the future, except for he's talking about science fiction stuff happening within the next 10 years. Right, so like I, that's well, my thing. Before my kids can drive, and he's talking about this stuff happening. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Is like I would love, <laughs> love, love. Um, yeah, I just. That's what I want, mostly because I'm I I know what dementia and Alzheimer's and things like MS, what it does, and I want this lace yeah. to stop that. Yeah, I don't know. I would love to be the... Neo. Don't get me wrong. Like, hmm, I would like to learn Spanish today. Uh, that would be cool, but it's those diseases yeah. that I, God, I wish we could get around. So the original intent, I believe, behind the neural lace was um, that th the way Elon Musk, so Elon Musk has made no uh, qualms about the fact that he's very concerned about things like artificial intelligence, uh, which if you talk to any, almost any philosopher or uh, somebody who's involved in computer science, there's a, there's a lot of like moral and philosophical questions around artificial intelligence that mm -hmm. people are pretty concerned about. That's not really the point. The thing is, the way that Elon Musk sees the problem is right now we have a great person to computer interface, but we don't really have an interface that works the other way around, where mm -hmm. the computer interfaces with the person. And so uh, kind of one of his concepts for mitigating some of the, the the moral problems of like how do you teach a computer morals is to uh, hopefully set up dialogue set up some type of communication between us and uh, us and the computer itself so neural lace is kind of his idea for being able to tackle exactly that and he says within the next 10 years that'll be a thing 
So let's I just, take a minute. I just saw this leak. Back back to tech spacular. Tech spacular. <laughs> yeah. There is a phone allegedly coming out by Xiaomi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. Okay, so hold up your phone, like your regular phone. I'll bite. Okay. But go vertic- But go vertically. Okay, I'm doing right. This. So it's that size, top to bottom. Now flip your phone over into hamburger mode. Okay. And now imagine <laughs> just folding it. T- so look at the thirds, and it just folds over from the top like this, and from the bottom like this. Yeah, it is. Super interesting. I'm gonna let you see. I, I don't know what it is, and I'll. It's a foldable phone. It's a foldable phone, but not in one way fold. Not fold this way. Fold uh, that way. Okay. That is crazy. How do you do that? Why? Well, so why? 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 I don't anyway, why. so Evan Blass okay. at EV Leaks on Twitter. Uh, can't speak to the authentic uh, authenticity. Mm-hmm. Authentication, authenticity, also that of the video, but it's allegedly made by Xiaomi. Okay, a couple things we gotta uh, touch on in the comments here. First of all, Tampa Tech. Tampa Tech, hey man, dude, we love you, bro. That's I haven't seen you since New York. Hopefully everything is well. You're good, man. I appreciate you so very, very much. Uh, also, we have Michael Daniels. He tutors Spanish for free. He'll teach you sometime. I do need to learn Spanish. <laughs> uh, mucho, I, mucho, mucho. Uh, Kango El Gato SN Me Pantalones. Uh, Larry also brings up a good point, which is like the logistical problems of if you send somebody to Mars and you're waiting on the home and transfer to be able to get back, that only comes around every so often. So you might be waiting years on Mars. I mean, it's transfer. It is a it is a one way trip. That's a that's a problem. It's oh, a yeah. one way trip. One it's, way or another. It's not a it's not an Apollo 13 where it's just like, hey, all you got to do is survive a couple of days. We just got to get you there and back. No, no uh uh-uh. uh. Why wouldn't you just colonize the moon? That has been okay. So let's talk about that. This is another story that just made it into the news. Basically, today, China has now successfully landed the first country ever to land a probe on the dark side of the moon. So, the relatively unexplored dark side of the moon, uh, there's a probe now that's just kind of wandering around doing its thing, doing awesome science. Good job for China. Just walking but, around. Well, so, I mean, not walking. What up, Moon? Driving, but, you know, whatever. Uh, what up, Yeah, point being is, like, this is arguably one of the first things you would want to do to be able to get to Mars or to start to start any type of, like, interstellar, well, even not interstellar, intersolar system travel is you need something that's off of Earth, outside of the gravity well a little bit to be able to... Yeah, know, I mean, it seems like a logic, like, I don't want Fuel wanna... and construction, all that kind right. of stuff. If I want to jump, I can just jump over there. Yeah. Like, I'll jump to the moon and then jump to Mars. Yeah. Look, I'm not smart. We well, know I mean, this. We know this. So my question is, like, I'd like to try to make things as simple as possible. Why not just go to the moon first? Well, relative to Mars, the moon is not that close to Mars. I, I get mean, it. It's like, it's like Earth, moon, and then Mars here type of deal. No, so, no, no, I get that. But, but I'm like... You, you also buy yourself substantially less gravity, which means right. now your fuel costs are a lot lower because once you're in orbit, if you've got a way to get fuel in space, which... Uh, turns out that the the polar caps on the moon, it's, it sounds like from kind of some of the early surveys and stuff that they've done, might have like hydrocarbon ice and stuff like that. So you could basically break that down and turn it into like hydrogen fuel and stuff. So now you've got a fuel source in space with low gravity. Bro, right? Now you can load your rocket up and just hammer down for days to get to Mars yeah. even faster potentially. I mean, again, I'm not a rocket scientist, but... Literally, all, what I'm thinking is, is like, if we want to get to Mars, okay, what do we need? Do we need a boatload of fuel? Okay. Yeah. So if I just take the rocket and burn the fuel that I need to go from Earth to Moon a whole bunch of times. Yeah. With just, I'm bringing a couple extra gallons yeah. of fuel, a couple yeah. extra gallons of fuel, and then I'll just take off from the Moon. Yeah. I'm literally making this, I'm Scott just playing space travel. This is the worst explanation <laughs> ever. If I were a rocket scientist, I would just fly to the Moon and then no, fly from the Moon. I don't care. I'll figure out a way to do it. I tell you what, I load my pickup truck full of fuel, full of gas tanks, and I drive that sucker right out to the moon. There's nobody that knows more about drones than me. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oh, if you don't know what that is, if you go to social media, you'll find out real quick what that is. Oh, 
that's a true story though. Boy, you you you're you're I'm cutting it close right to on that edge. Cut right on the edge. Right close to the I had to. I couldn't. It was too good enough. <sighs> so uh, you also brought up um, neural lace being used to help people with disabilities. Google actually just won a patent for a next generation smart device interface, which is whoa too cool. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the videos for this yet. Uh, basically, the patent is for interfacing with your device via yes. radar. That's of so all things, cool. radar. Um, what it basically allows you to do is they have these uh, teeny tiny little sensors in the phone itself um, that all basically emit radar. So it's doing radar tracking just like you would with an actual airplane or anything like that. But the cool thing is that it enables these just brilliant interfaces with your device. So little things like being able to swipe or scroll through a web page just by rubbing your fingers together or adjusting volume just by turning a kind of virtual volume knob. Um, I, super cool stuff. Uh, at least initially, it sounds like kind of the goal is to target people that might have either uh, disability of some variety. Maybe they, uh -huh. they either can't talk or can't speak well or something along those lines. Um, but man, what a cool idea. The, there's a bunch of videos that are out there right now kind of showing people interacting with early prototypes of these sensors. And boy, you want to talk about hot takes for 2019, things I would love to see in the next Pixel phone? Give me that. You want the that, ability to like to to basically look at my phone and go like this to change like whatever. That's a differentiator. Like, Why can't you just use your voice? I mean, for sure, you can use your voice. I can. Yeah. Not everybody can. I agree with yeah. that. So like, I would love the ability to do that. But what I'm saying is, if you give it both, now you're capturing all sorts of audiences. And that's what I'm talking about. Like, I I feel like where Google really excels is in the flexibility to interact with its devices because especially with like the home or did you the hear, assistant. Did you just hear about the lights that Google, like they're specifically made for the assistant? No, really? Yeah, they're Philips Hue. <laughs> <laughs> Philips Hue. You're such a jerk. <laughs> I don't think he's watching. He's not he's watching, but that's, uh, I'm such a You're jerk. such a jerk. Stats, for whatever reason, I'm going to call him out. He's probably not watching. He, he was like, yeah, the Philips Hue. And I was like, the what? <laughs> this, this is a deep cut from Hue? a long time ago. Yeah. He, he thought they were, it was uh, the Philips light bulbs were called. It's Hue. Way, not Hue. But it's okay. We love him. Oh, He's man. very pretty. Yeah. <laughs> He's very pretty. But anyway, they specifically that. announced that they made lights that are supposedly supposed to work with Google Home very specifically. I wonder where Whereas before the... it was like the Home Kit. Uh, okay. But this okay. is... Let me see if I can find it. Okay. That's interesting. It just announced today. Huh. Sorry, I didn't mean to like bounce all over the place. No, no, no. Hey. Is what it is. That's that's this is part like and parcel of what the live show is. This is the tech full spacular. Live show, tech spacular. This is the live show experience right here. Uh, but yeah, I mean, so this is this is a whole new way of interacting with your devices. Um, I mean, I think there's there's a ton of oh, not G it's GE. I'm sorry. Yeah, close enough. It's, it's the same thing, right? LG, GE, whatever. But there's there's a bunch of like cool ideas that you could have for interacting with. One of the ones that I love. This is not my idea, but. Uh, I, I read this one online too. I love the idea of being able to, you know, just interact with your phone from here. For example, if I wanted to cast to my TV, just being able to like point to the TV and I mean, that, oh, that would be nice. <laughs> oh, that would be so cool. Okay. So this is kind of big. This is specifically GE's new smart lights and switches take a shine to Google. This is from <laughs> CNET. They work with everything, but the newest C by GE smart bulbs and switches were made with the Google and Google Assistant in mind. So there's the new C with by GE smart switches. It's a smart dimmer switch coming Q1 for 50 bucks. That's really good. Uh, smart dimmer switch with built-in motion and light sensors for 75 bucks okay. Q1. Okay. Okay. And smart on-off switches for 40 bucks Q2. Hmm. The bulbs look up to be anywhere between. Oh, that's nice. Um, one smart bulb about 40 bucks. Smart flood lamp about forty five bucks, and then the color changing rope lights Q two seventy five bucks. Hmm. Um, I'm actually pretty excited about the the new switch looks very cool. Looks really cool. The dimmer switch. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, it looks awesome. Um, very stylish. Go check out CNET's uh, CES coverage. They'll talk about it. It looks really good. I'm... Or uh, you can come back probably next week, and I'm sure we'll be talking about stuff that happened yeah. at CES. Because so, I'm telling you, I'm already taking notes. So right now, CES just started today, I yeah. think. So naturally, it's the it's obviously the day our smart or our smart our, our st what you want 
Let me, let me get back up yeah, a second. Yeah. Naturally, we didn't plan very well, and we didn't do a live show when CES was like halfway over. We planned it when it just started when yeah, it nothing us something launches. Next week. So yeah, next week let, we'll talk let about everything it. come out, and then we get a yeah. chance to talk about it. God, what is wrong with me? Today? Oh, boy, so many things. <laughs> sure, so 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 many out. things. Um, you want to talk about? You want to talk about Apple or Chromecasts? Oh, uh, let's do Apple first. Okay. Apple had a bad week. Oh. Woof. Uh, Fifty billion dollars so, in market valuation. So they're actually down close to five hundred. Five hundred billion? That's not possible. From their high in uh, when they crossed over a trillion. Oh no! Yeah, I no. I heard. I swear to you, I heard about it earlier today. Okay. I'm gonna look it up. Uh, Apple. Five hundred billion dollars. I mean, that's. I know it's fifty billion percent. Yeah, I know it's. 50, they basically lost fifty billion market valuation in one day. It was like uh, close to ten percent, nine point something another percent. Oh, part of the valuation. part of the problem that they're running into is uh, they said they completely missed the boat on their uh, phones in China, their iPhone sales in China. They completely whiffed. Yeah, them, which yeah. I'm not surprised. I suppose. I guess I'm surprised that they whiffed so bad. They dropped. They dropped six hundred and sixty points. Straight. Oh no, no. I'm sorry. The Dow fell 660 points just from Apple. Well, okay. So two different things. Let's yeah, talk yeah. about Apple, and let's talk about the effect Apple has on the entire economy. Yeah. Because they're two different things. Yeah, for sure. So the first one is Apple lost a whole bunch of money. They lost a boatload. A boatload of money. They completely missed on all iPhone sales in China. They they really kind of emphasized the fact that that was a big deal. The second one was there was not a lot of uh, upgrades in place from the iPhone X or other previous yeah. iPhones, which I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing, and I'll tell you why in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, it obviously speaks volumes to the fact that they lost it in new activations, new devices, like sure. that particular cost. But I don't think they lost customers. I think people are just holding on to their devices longer. So that's that's the other thing that I was going to bring up is they they're actually starting to look at. Uh, consumer habits when it comes to devices and it's it's becoming a double-edged problem where the devices are good enough to want to hold on to for a while yeah. the new products that are coming out aren't really that much better they're not really that well differentiated from previous generations and I mean other than planned obsolescence which Apple has already gotten in trouble for doing there's just not that much of an incentive especially in current market conditions with you know people a little concerned about economy and stuff like that there's really not that much of a need to upgrade and Apple is suffering because of that and I think that's where Google was very smart to go with a uh, I mean, I'm going to say it's a cheaper phone, but that's not in a, like, it's a crappy phone. It's right. just a phone that was, they didn't push the mark the same way that Apple did. Apple really hung themselves out there to try and create, like, another titanic leap over the previous generation phone, and it backfired. Yeah. And that's that's a rare miss for Apple. By the way, it says, after Thursday's losses uh, pushed Apple's market valuation, this is according to CNBC, below $700 billion, uh, so the company has lost $450 billion in market value since its peak of about $1.1 trillion last year. I, $450 billion. To be, to be, I, I don't think Apple's going to fold. Let me, let me just go out here. People, uh, no, no, some no, people no, are going to no, be no, like, no, 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 no. Apple's falling apart, no, blah, blah, blah. No, blah. no, 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 no. Apple's not falling apart. No. They, they, they've got to evolve. Yeah. Quite honestly, that's all it really comes down to. Well, it's... I think I think almost every company you've wrung just about everything you're gonna get out of a smartphone, at least for a while, until you start doing something interesting, like I don't know, maybe a radar user interface. You know what I mean? Like you, a smartwatch that competes with Apple smartwatch. Google. Oh my God. Yeah. Pixel watch. Give oh, it to me. Something. Anything. Give it to me. Look, um, I I own, like the Apple Watch Series Four is so good. It is. That there are people. Getting uh, literally prescriptions, yeah, to buy the watch from their cardiologist. That's how good that watch is. Yep. There's a prescription that says go out and buy it. As a matter of fact, I think it was another YouTuber. His dad was specifically told by his doctor, go get it. 
yeah. because of the the medical side of the house. Like Apple got that right. That's why I think wearables is a really big deal. Google has the glucose thing. Yeah. But that's where we're going. The next unexploited yeah. kind of kind of sector. I'm interested to see. I think part of the problem you're going to have is like how does that how how does that interaction between your phone, which is like the device that everyone has, so it's it for a long time, it's going to be tied back to your phone somehow. But how does that interaction work? It has to be non obtrusive, and frankly, I think it has to be something where I could still use the wearable outside of having my phone because I may not have my phone directly on me at all times or what have you. That's like what Google uh, Glass was doing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you can play music from it. If You you can Bluetooth connect to it and play music on. I mean, I feel like, like there are ways to do that. It, it's, that's a use for it, but that's not... That's not the that's not the app. You know what I mean? It's not like the hot app that you have to have for your phone. Because remember uh, back when like the iTunes Store came out with all the apps and stuff like that. It's yeah. like, oh yes, there's an app for that. This is the app that you have to have that you didn't know you needed. That era of smartphones, where you you need that use case for a wearable device. Apple Watch is pretty good, um, especially the you know texting from your watch or calls from your watch. Oh. Oh my gosh, my wife uses it all the time. Are you serious? Oh yeah. Is it good? Yeah, surprisingly good. Really? Surprisingly. I good. tried it on a Huawei watch. It was trash. I mean, that's because it was diverting half of that voice data to China. Oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, I did it. I don't care. God, it's so bad. Get out. <laughs> my God, such a, man. Such a lame, easy. Job. Oh, jeez, that was so bad. Yeah, well, you know. Uh, uh, so Apple. I think they have a problem, personally, this is my personal opinion. I'm going to go on a tirade of why I think, uh, well, I just zoned out again. Mm -hmm. Tablets are just, they really doubled down on this, this iPad thing. The, the iPad, iPad Pro. iPad Pro. Yeah, yeah. You don't, you're not a tablet fan. I'm not a tablet fan. I think they're totally overrated. Which is... Interesting, given the fact that you have an iPad Pro. I do. A full size, one of the Mongo size, like looks like a, 12, a, 12 a dining room table. Yes, that's it. I iPad walk around Pro. with a dining room table. I do it because in the area that we're in, the kids get iPads in school. Yeah. Some have Chromebooks. Fair. Literally both. Like, sure. They have the yeah. ability to do one or the other. And so the choice was given, which one do you want? I said, well, I have a fully mobile Mm -hmm. iPad, or I have a not mobile laptop, basically, with yeah. a Chromebook. I'm going to always take fully mobile for the children. Yet he says that he's not into the... I'm not into it because I just use I use my phone. Look, I use my phone all the time. You do. I have no trouble at all yeah. watching a YouTube video on my phone. You, I have none. No you watch As a matter of fact, phone? I will watch, watch Netflix on your phone. Yeah, you know, I will watch a YouTube video like this. Oh, so like the with tiny you? window up yeah. top. Yeah, I'll watch a YouTube video like that. Don't care one bit. I don't care one bit. I get the so, information that I need. I get the joy, and I get to read the comments while it's playing. That's fair. Uh, you like you you have a laptop for work. Well, I guess you you have a laptop for work too. Well, yeah. A laptop for work and a laptop for other work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess that's your personal laptop too. This is my personal laptop. Yeah. You you don't have a tablet. You use your phone for almost everything. I feel like if you're not doing the live show, you're not doing video editing, you really don't use this that much. This? Yeah. I use it all the time. Do you? Oh, yeah. I okay. do photo editing, though. But, okay, but outside of those use cases. Yes. Nope. You don't use it. Mm-mm. So, your, your primary device is your phone. Oh, 100%. That's why I have no trouble spending, like, oh, I can't spend $1,000 on a device. I put the device in my pocket. It is on body 16 hours a day. <laughs> Think about it. I wake yep. up in the morning... I, I, I shut my alarm off on my on phone. On your phone, yeah. Go take a shower. Yeah, yeah. Usually if, well, I wake up so early I can't do this, but if I want, like, depending on the weekend, I will start music on my phone. Yeah. Mostly because I got rid of the home that's in the bathroom. Yeah. Why would you do that? That's like the perfect place to have a home. Yeah, I'm going to get another one. Okay, yeah, I'm yeah. getting another Taking one. Taking a shower, home. singing some... Oh, my God. Bed. Like, I, t I, I really should get back into... Uh, Tell me. Yeah. Let me go with what Kathleen said. I'm not I a tablet just, person. I, I like too. I like the stuff I can watch on my laptop. Yeah. With a tablet, you need to hold it in your hands. Bingo. Yeah. 
I agree with you. I I have two tablets within arm's this is reach un- right here. There's this one is tablet there and there's a tablet over there. This is uncomfortable. If I want a laptop, I yep. put my laptop right there. There's been many a times I'll, like, I'll watch like Iron Man 3. Yeah. Clearly the best Iron Man. Not even close. No, I don't oh, believe thank it. You. I thought you were serious for a second. I was Absolutely like, we, I don't know if this YouTube thing is going to be able to continue because no, it's not the best. The we're best one's break Iron Man one for sure. No, no, look, what can... I should have said is two. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <With> Mickey <laughs> Rourke <Table> flip. <laughs> I can't do this. Creative differences. We're done. No, we're done. I mean, my thing is, I my phone is a device that I have to have constantly on me. Yeah. Uh, it's an addiction. Well, I'll call it what it is. It is what it yeah, is. But I mean, look, it's the thing. First thing, but... yeah, the first thing I touch in the morning. And it's the last thing I touch at night. I it's so <laughs> I, weird. I recognize that I do not <laughs> fall under uh, use case from our users. Most mm-hmm. users, because I, like I said, I have a tablet there and a tablet there. Like literally, I can see one of them right there. Yep. The other one's in my backpack. I have a tablet. Actually, matter of fact, two of them. I have a Barnes and Noble Nook. Tell me how old that thing is. That was my. OG Android tablet that I rooted in ROM that sits upstairs that was my Android tablet for a long time. I have a Kindle Paperwhite. I also have this laptop. And then, again, within iShot, I have two desktops right there, too. So. We could not be more polar opposite. No, in that, like, in that particular, like, I, it's hilarious. Have, I have so much computing power. <laughs> to me, because it's like, so, like you have a Paperwhite. Yeah. You, you read. I read every single night, minimum. 20 pages. No. Oh, minimum. Wait, 20 book pages or 20, like, what paperweight pages? Um, Because I don't think they're the same. They're they're not. I mean, I don't probably, uh, I don't know. I, I can't say. I would say probably easily 20 paperweight pages. Audiobook for me. No, I read every single night. I read. Nope. I'm I'm working my way through the uh, Harry Potter books right now. I know, I know, read. I listen. I read uh, Marcus Aurelius last time. I am listening to Essentialism. Great, again. yeah. Again, it's a great book. Again, for the second yeah. time. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Why? Uh, it just I it, very rarely do I read a book twice. Oh, I listen very to it though. Yeah, I'm listening well, yeah. to it. Yeah, I don't know. I, I've never read. Purchased I've, on Google Books. I've never listened to a podcast twice. You've never listened to a podcast twice? Yeah. You ever watched the same YouTube video twice? Oh yeah, for sure. That's the same thing. Yeah, YouTube videos are way shorter than. An audiobook is an endeavor. You are committed to that for just put it on while you're going to work. Yeah, that's what that's what I got. I got podcast time for that, man. That's my podcast time. That's when I, I get I get news, I get uh, development podcast time. Oh, I don't do news. Listening to uh, uh, talk Python to me because I'm a Python developer too. So uh, that's my Python development time. Uh, which, by the way, counts for... Uh, oh, come off of it. I, no, it does. It does. Are you uh, kidding? Would you track your... No. Yes, I swear to you, it does. We're talking shop at the moment, but yes, if you go to the website and you log no. your learning hours, it is in there. Podcast, off hours, boom. Do you know how many hours I have? Way over 100. Way over 100. It's awesome. That's unbelievable. It's awesome. How does it count? It counts, man. That's some... Look, as soon as I... almost I... cursed. I almost <laughs> I always dropped it because I didn't believe it. Look, you, know what, soon, you know what? Good for you. As soon as I heard that you could do work. that, I was like, oh, I got the the loophole to end all loopholes. Because I listen to on the way to work, in the way home from work, hour every day, almost. Do you put on YouTube videos in the background and just let it play? Um, if I'm if I'm working from home, I will usually do like either a podcast or some type of like something that is related to what I'm doing to just kind of keep my brain in you know, if I'm if I'm doing development stuff, like if I'm writing Python, a lot of times I'll put on something related to Python so I can either have noise on in the background or legitimately learn something. So yeah, a lot of times. Whatever, Larry. Totally counts. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Larry's got my back. Thank you. Thank you. Larry knows. <clears throat> Larry knows. I get it. I get it. Good for you. Yeah. Boom. But flex. no, I'm, I... Uh... Weird flex, but okay. Yeah. What What were we talking about? <laughs> I don't remember. We're, oh, we're, we're talking about tablets and how you're not oh, a yeah, tablet. I just don't know how to tell. Like, like, like Kathleen said, I don't want to hold like a caveman. I don't want to hold like Look, a caveman. I 100% I will agree with the both of you on this one. There are times where I'm laying in, in bed and my hands fall asleep and I drop it on my face. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, yes. My hands get cold from holding it up and reading. Yeah. And like, I have to like... Set it down like, and like warm my hands up a little bit. <laughs> Hang on, <laughs> hold on there, book. I'm gonna read you oh in a god. second. Oh my god, I just really? gotta get all the blood back in my hand. Really? It's so exhausting, oh. guys. No, my thing is, is I will, 
I, I wear headphones a lot. Yeah, okay. Constantly. Yeah. Like, yeah. I will put headphones in and I will evoke... So I use Pixel Buds, no shocker. Yeah. I use the Assistant constantly to tell it to do things, send messages, all that jazz. I will keep my phone <laughs> in my pocket as long as I can. I just saw... Kathleen, I just saw your message. Yes, Scott, why would you want to hold something like a caveman? Like a caveman. That's I don't hold like a caveman. That's hilarious. Yeah, hold on. I don't hold like a caveman. I'll put my phone down and I will talk to it. Yeah. It will give me the information that I need. Yeah. Here's the thing. I'm not an audio learner. I would much rather see it. That's oh, what's so interesting about no the question about yeah, I YouTube has 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 ruined me for learning. Like, I had <laughs> such a hard time reading technical articles now because it's like I'll so, just go watch like a three minute video. Correct. Like, bang I just want to right bang now. out a three minute video yeah. and let me be done with it. I'm, I'm That's my thing. Hundred percent agree. Three minutes, bam, perfect. Yeah. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Uh, okay. You want to talk? Uh, you got anything else to talk about with uh, your your how much you think tablets are overrated? No, I think they suck. Okay. Boom. Chromecast. Although the Pixel Slate is gorgeous. Uh, look, look, the tablets are beautiful. I want period. It. End of story. iPad, I, iPads, all that. Beautiful. I I am very interested in trying to get my hands on a Pixel Slate because. Again, I'm I'm a I'm a computer guy. I'm an IT guy. I'm a lover of computer hardware. I am into tablets. It's gorgeous. It, it is gorgeous. So it is gorgeous. remarkable. And and the the Pixel Slate, especially at the high end, has some ridiculous specs on it. It's so I'm pretty. Dying to get my hands on it. It is I'm so genuinely, pretty. Genuinely curious as to like what the use case is. Just like the the Pixel Book, which again another high end device. I mean, which is also pretty gorgeous. Gorgeous device. I want Ben has one of those. I want yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, well, so, he sent it to us, and I wanted to keep yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, oh. I'm I'm hoping, fingers crossed, I would love to get my hands on a Pixel Slate just to see, especially being the tablet guy, whether or not it passes muster, whether That's or not right. there's a use case for it. So we'll, yeah. we'll, right. we'll see. Right. We'll see. Uh, uh, last one. What was it? Chromecasts. Oh, God. Uh, so th this one is... This one's interesting. Too. Creepy. If you have a Chromecast, this Creepy. is this is the port where you want to probably like set up and just pay attention a little bit. So there's a story about um, some hackers, eh, hackers in very loose quotes, who are basically hijacking Chromecasts that are on your network um, to shill for PewDiePie. And if you <laughs> don't know who PewDiePie is, he is, I believe, as of now, and this may change. Uh, you keep talking, I will check. Uh, he was up until this point the biggest YouTube channel out there at over 70 million subscribers and the shtick with it is uh, PewDiePie and another absolutely monster mega YouTube channel called T-Series are in a uh, subscription battle. So right now they are basically trying to out sub each other vying to be the biggest YouTube channel that's out there and T-Series is closing in on PewDiePie. So a bunch of PewDiePie supporters uh, took to... I mean, they commented on some of our videos. They left comments in our videos saying subscribe to PewDiePie because that's, that, yeah, they're I just trying to get... I didn't know what that meant. Like, at yeah, the time. Yeah, you deleted the comment. Eh, whatever. Um, yeah, I didn't get it. So, yeah, so what they're doing now is they're they're actually, they're exploiting, it's a, it's a couple of vulnerabilities. One of them is um, just kind of exploiting the way a Chromecast works. And one of them is an actual exploit on your router itself. So, pause. Let's have a conversation about your router. Most of you probably don't really log into your router and make any configuration changes. I would encourage you to at least try to log in and look for something called UPnP, Universal Plug and Play. If you have it enabled, turn it off. That is about the closest approximation to wireless cancer that you're ever going to get. It wow. Is, it is a gaping security hole in your network. Basically, uh, what UPnP sure. does do that. What UPnP, UPnP does is it allows devices on the inside of your network to request ports to be opened on your firewall, your firewall, which by the way, protects you from things exactly like this. Um, it's a great feature for users that just don't really want to have to mess with management and stuff, but there is the security trade-off and, and this is basically what happens. So these smart hackers have figured out that you can basically do a thing that forces your Chromecast to fall off your network and once it does, then they're able to connect to it, hijack it, and then display whatever they want to. In this case, what they're doing with it is displaying <laughs> a video or something. Turn it off. What happens if I turn it off? 
Nothing. You will not notice the difference. Here's where you'll notice the difference. Xbox Live. You don't use Xbox Live. No, I don't. Turn it off. Well, I, I'm literally your dumb use case. So this yeah. is happening live right now. Yeah. I he's, have. He's got it on. Yeah, I have it turned on right now. Yeah. You can see. Mm, maybe. Uh, you can't awesome. see. It's very bright. But I have it on right now. Google Wi-Fi. It, let me just tell you right now how to do it. If you have Google Wi-Fi, go to the app, hit network in general. Yep. Go to advanced networking. And one, two, three, four, five, six down. UPNP. Big U, big P, lowercase n, big P, enable or disable universal plug and play. Mine was enabled. Yeah. And now it's not. It's, if, if you're somebody who tries to do, uh, you know, online gaming or something along those lines, or if you have a service that you're hosting, which, if you have a service that you're hosting on your network and you're trying to reach out to the internet, you should probably figure out how to do this without using UPnP. Um, I, I would argue that for the for the average user, you're probably not going to notice a difference if you turn UPnP off. If you have something that doesn't work after you've turned UPnP off, what you need to do is you need to look at something called port forwarding. You need to figure out what ports you need to open in your firewall to forward that onto your devices that are inside the network. It's a pain in the butt. Yes, I agree with you, but it beats having this just massive security hole. So that's that's my that's my my. 20 second, 30 second, one minute spiel hey, on network security. Me, so. uh, also, I do want to point out, Kathleen, I love you more and more every single day. Scott, of course know I know who Cutie Pie is. Yes, I do. Uh, uh, but just the fact that she called you out on it just makes I me so happy. I didn't say that happy. I didn't know him. So happy. It's just. We it, both are bad. <sighs> I'm hurt. I'm, it, cur I'm currently crying inside. It, it brings joy to my heart. I mean, it really does. It really does. Just warms the cockles of my heart. You don't have a heart. I. There's. Whatever. Keep There's talking. There's something there like a heart. Anyway, so what these guys are doing is basically hijacking your Chromecast and displaying a banner that says, subscribe to PewDiePie. That's the sort of it, which is hilarious, but but super nefarious. What could they do? Because oh. you told me about some stuff that they could do. I was like, so absolutely not. So here's the real security implication. What these, uh, like some really, really bad guys have figured out how to do is they've created YouTube channels that have videos where, I mean, there's no real video content. It's basically just voice commands for common uh, voice activated assistants. So think the Google Assistant or Alexa or, I mean, I was going to say Cortana, but nobody uses Cortana. <laughs> Cortana. That's <laughs> Sorry. funny. I, I, I sort of feel bad. I don't really feel bad. Why would you feel um, bad? So what they've done is they've, they've created these videos that's just black video and then sound bites of them issuing common commands. And so they do this hijack of your Chromecast, they knock it off the network, they take over your Chromecast, and then they can cast whatever they want to to your device. Anything. Anything. From YouTube, especially. So then they just connect it to their own channel, and then they start broadcasting the audio from these videos, issuing commands to your assistant that may or may not be listening. Things like, hey, keyword, turn my thermostat down. So now, if it's wintertime, they can just turn your thermostat off, or unlock my doors. Or unlock my doors. So you're you, you're picking up what I'm putting down now. That's that's a problem. So turn UPnP off. I did. Yeah. Thank you for that. You you're literally welcome. done one thing today. Friends helping friends. This is what I'm here one for. One thing today. That's it. That's all I've done. All you've done is one thing. Yeah. That's that's pretty much it. That that's all I'm responsible for. I get my one a day. Everybody gets one, yeah. Spider Man. <laughs> Tell them. Uh, Apparently Every everyone gets one. I love Family Guy. Uh, you got anything else? I don't. Uh, oh, uh, kind of. I have updated our podcast on Podbean. What? All 13 episodes. So here's what we're going to do. Um, obviously, the last week's video will be marked, unlisted, private, whatever it is. I can't remember. So it'll be, it'll be offline. You won't be able to go and see it. We'll keep this one on. I always say 24 to 48 hours. It ends up being seven days. Um, I'll take the audio from this one, upload it to Podbean. So if you want to listen to our live shows, yeah, great. Somebody's made fun of me. No, or no, it's fine. It's fine. Scott, I call Scott out on Earthing. Earthing. Oh God, she does. Kathleen, Earth. I love you. Earthing. <laughs> you can check out our uh, podcast. It is the Tech Speaks. Yeah, I think it's the TechSpeaks.Podbean.com. It is indeed. Ooh, nice, nice. Uh, we've updated. Recall. It, well, it's there. Yeah. It, we've updated it with everything. All of our live shows are going to be there. Also, fun story, all of the live shows 
on our website, thetechspeaks.com. You will be able to go back and view those. Yeah. I have marked them as private, but I believe that you might be able to still see them. No, I marked them as unlisted. There you go. Unlisted, because unlisted means if you have the link, you can go back and watch it. Um, anyway, so you'll be able to go back and watch those live shows at thetechspeaks.com as well. Check it out. We're trying Web to page. fight the algorithm. Web page? Podbean stuff? I mean, I don't even... I don't even know who you are anymore. I know, I do think. You've done stuff. I've done a lot of things. I'm trying to get our... Like I told you, 2019 yeah. is the year that, technically speaking, whoosh, here we take over. Look, here's the deal about the whole YouTube thing. It has opened up opportunities outside of no YouTube. Question. No question. Absolutely zero question. Like, no question. The ability for us to do this stuff, we do this stuff because it's fun, but people recognize that outside of the YouTube community. Not to take it away from YouTube or anybody like that. We still get to connect with everybody like this. But it's opened up doors for me in uh, my professional life like bananas. Yeah. Yeah. And he's just riding coattails. Oh, <laughs> oh that was harsh. harsh. I'm harsh. sorry. I didn't mean to. No, you, you don't care. I, I can see it in your eyes. I know that you actually <laughs> don't care. Uh, Larry has one more good one to, uh, to roll out. He goes, <clears throat> he goes within quotes. Uh, that keyword. That keyword. Text my boss, I quit. <laughs> oh, that's, that's dirty, super dirty, because, and hilarious, and not impossible. That's the other problem. Is like yeah. if you were to just happen to have boss yeah. in your phone, whether for it that's be an the, absolute possibility. The, the Google one or the Amazon one. Yep. I'm trying to say this without all the keywords, really it's hard, remarkably difficult. It is to do. really hard to do. Uh, you could totally send that, yeah. and uh, let me just be the first to tell you, that would count. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That is that is written. Oh, that's that's a problem. That's a problem. What so, is that round white thing that looks like a toilet paper on your top mm, shelf? Uh, that would be this. So, Kathleen, one of the things you may not know about <laughs> me is I'm actually also a big fan of 3D printing. True so, story. Uh, this is a 3D printed, I guess you would call it a vase, if we're going to be sophisticated. Oh, for God's sakes. I'm trying to think of other 3D printed things. Oh, I have tons of 3D printed stuff. Oh, right no, there. no, I do. Like, yeah. literally out of camera shot, I have so many things that are 3D printed. This is something that the I... The <laughs> Some things we can't show on camera. Uh, there are tons of things that I've printed that has, uh, I mean, changed how we do video production. It's changed the way that I've, uh, I do a lot of home repairs and stuff like that, that you know, electronics repairs, it's changed a lot. So this is just a, a little vase designed. I put it up there just specifically so that people would see things like that, take interest, and hopefully ask questions. So thank you. You fell right into my trap. I appreciate you. Boom shakalaka. Larry, she knows all. Let me just leave it at that. Uh, she's interesting. I did not know that you could not. So uh, anybody who happens to be, I guess, listening to the podcast, uh, Larry brought up in the comments you could use google uh that this same kind of chromecast attack to call 911 interesting i mean because i, I never thought think about, about it that, that way one. yeah but and kathleen responded with you actually cannot do that from the google assistant i don't know that's very interesting i don't know if amazon's counterpart to that can or not i would assume similar yeah. no um yeah interesting yeah that's very, yeah, that's see, this is why very I interesting. Live show. I know, like, right? It's so cool, right? In, interaction with people that I would normally not get a chance to. And uh, again, the responses that we get, the, the questions mm -hmm. in the in the dialogue and the conversations we get, like you can't you can't do this anywhere else. Like it just doesn't mm -hmm. it doesn't work the same way. So I appreciate all of you so much. Thank you all so much for stopping by. We love each and every one of you. Um, yeah, I think that's gonna do it for us for this week. You got anything else? I really like this setup. You did a great job. Thank you, sir. Uh, the the rare compliment from Mr. Scott Peachy. I mean, I the shelves are a little... <laughs> a little suspect. <laughs> so I mean, I definitely good. wouldn't put anything heavier on there. On yeah, there. yeah, yeah. No, no, you I think that. it looks great. Uh, Greg has done... The, you guys, what you don't know... I'm going to tout Greg a little bit. What you don't know is there's been Stop. a no, tremendous no, no. amount of work for the live show that's uh, really coming here. You can see right now that we're both using our MacBooks, uh, whereas before, we couldn't do that because we were running the live show off of one of our MacBooks. Yeah. Uh, now we have a dedicated desktop computer. 
dedicated streaming hardware. We have a uh, new camera. We have new backdrop, new which is light years better than what so we were using. We so. are taking the live show extremely serious. We're going to have live show guests on at some point. Um, yeah, we don't know, know when yet. We're still working out the kinks of those particular bits. And quite honestly, we ha haven't got any guests lined up. I have a list of people that I want to contact. Mm -hmm. Haven't heard from them yet, but we'll get there. Yeah. Maybe we should do like a, step a time. Google Home where we just have like a great big, how many people can we shove in a chat? Like, oh, that'd be fun. Like an actual Google call yeah. where we just shove, I know 30 people at one point was worth the maxes, but I can't remember since they've gone, since but, they've gone to meet. Let's, let's test out uh, duo. Ooh. Ideas. That's nice. <laughs> I got how do we get ideas. that over there though? Uh, we'll Come on, idea guy. We'll figure that one Generate out. Generate that one. Sharing something other. We'll cross right. that bridge when we get there. All right, that's going to do it for us for this week. Thank you all so much for stopping by. Where do they find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Ominous Hominid. Get to him. No. Okay. You can find him on some other stuff. Nobody cares. <laughs> at Scott Peachy on the Tweet Machine. At The Scott Peachy on The Gram. As the kids call it. The Gram. I'm not on Snapchat. Kathleen says still, still 30. 30. Okay. That's what I thought too. I, look, I'm keeping you around forever just just for the information. Scores. 30. You're a wealth of knowledge, man. 30 people you know, 30 people going bananas. I want to do it. It would be it would be out of control. Ooh, Michael Daniels, Zoom allows you 50. I look, we can't manage 30. We can't manage 2. Yeah. Ain't no way we're going to manage 50 on Zoom. Ooh. That would be interesting. Big thoughts. 2019 is going to be Explosive. Explosive. <laughs> Explosions. Uh, all right. All right, that's all I got. All right, we'll see you all next time. Thanks for stopping by.